Welcome back on this Sunday morning. Social and digital media are changing religion. In some cases, it's an extension of existing religious activity, while for others, it's become a substitute as online users find new ways to get in tune with their spiritual side. Los Angeles-based church, the Golden Heart Center, is using Vimeo to connect with users. Pastor Ted Stefan says social media so methods can reach believers who might feel uncomfortable attending an unfamiliar church. He loves us so much that he wants to be able to talk to you, and he wants you to be able to talk to him. Those who frequently use the LDS Church's websites may have noticed how they've become more social media friendly, with much of the content now easily shareable. Anyone who studies the workings of the human body has surely seen God moving in his majesty and power. Using Twitter and social media is the new norm for religious leaders. Instead of one weekly service, pastors, priests, and even the Pope can deliver daily spiritual thoughts. Pope Francis is actually ranked the most influential Twitter user based on average number of retweets he receives. Almost 20,000 for the Pope compared to 2,000 for President Obama. With help from social media, folks can find a religious experience 24-7 instead of just during a weekly sermon. Desert News reporter Herb Scribner has been writing about these trends and joins us on the show this morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's the most interesting thing that you came across as you looked at this topic? You know, one of the, the most interesting things is that it's changed the way that uh, the hierarchy of like a religious institution works. It's now, it's gone from being a top-down thing where you have the religious leader kind of talking and, and preaching out, but now it's become like a mutual conversation between everybody, and uh, that's been really interesting to see. What are you seeing as far as other religions using social media to reach out? Yeah, you know, you see guys, I mean, you look at the Pope, he's, you know, Pope Francis, he's, you know, He's the most influential person on Twitter, uh, as far as world leaders go. You know that's big. But you know they'll retweet users, they'll they'll answer users' questions. You know if a user has wants to know when a service is or when something's going on, you know these religious institutions will you know uh, send a tweet right at them and and uh, open up the conversation a lot more. I think in the last year we've seen the LDS Church jump on board with uh, Twitter accounts for the first presidency and and social media pages. Um, is this uh, how is this impacting people who are actually looking for religion? Yeah, there's this there's this sense of comfort, you know, because people are really really familiar with social media and all, all these different forms of things, and and uh, you know this new digital age. And so when they see that, when they see these Twitter accounts for these different institutions and these religious leaders, they want to get involved with that. So they feel comfortable and they feel like they're a part of the a part of the community, and it's just an easier way for them to get involved. Isn't it also a cop out though? Because you can you can get it on your phone. It's not going to ask you to do anything. You don't have to go meet anybody. Right, right. And so you've pretty much eliminated religious contact from your life but still getting it, you know, via Twitter. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's understandable, but it's also, it just makes it more accessible for people. People are using it as a, an extension of their, uh, of, their, of their religious experience. You know, they're able to connect with their religious leaders, and then on top of that, they're also able to, you know, talk with other people who are going to the pews with them. You know, they're able to organize events and group right. things, and it's just an, it's an extension more than it is a substitution. A lot of people uh, don't like going to the pew. Right. And, uh, and, and this may be a, a substitute for that. But the upside is it gives them something as opposed to nothing, right? Yeah, exactly. It keeps it going. It keeps the, it keeps, you know, the, the, the believers in tune with their religion. And it just, just extends the experience really well. And that's, uh, that's kind of the, the, the good thing coming out of this. So what's going to happen? We're going to wake up on Sunday someday and we'll just watch church on our phone and we're good? That might be. That might <laughs> be, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's totally possible. You never know. You All never right. Know. Interesting stuff. Thank you very much. Hey, anytime. It's great to have you here. You can read Herb Scribner's article, How Social and Digital Media Are Changing Religion, at DesertNews.com. Most family budgets are tight when it comes to travel, and the high cost of lodging prevents many families from visiting those exciting destinations altogether. But if you're willing to swap houses with strangers, you can find some incredible travel deals. Shelly Miller is a blogger and home exchange expert and joins me live from San Diego. How many swaps has your family done, Shelly? Good morning. We have done 15 home swaps throughout the world. 15? What's the most exotic place? Probably San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, which is in central Mexico, and it was a villa, and um, it was built by this couple who lived in Canada, and it's their, it still is in their vacation home, and it was a Moroccan villa. It had a, a casita, a little guest house, and a pool. It had a gardener, a maid, and a driver. Well, let's put that picture up and show you, uh, and we're looking at it now. So 
you were able to go to this place by simply allowing those folks to come stay at your house. Is that how this thing works? That is exactly how it works. You get to know them online and you can talk to them, you can Skype them, you can um, email them, whatever you'd like, whatever you're comfortable with, and you get to know them. Um, and eventually, by the time you do a home exchange, you feel like you're exchanging with a friend. Now, look, I'd be a little nervous in today's day and age. How, how do you know it's going to stay safe? How do you know your stuff's going to be there when you get back? And how can you trust where you're going? You trust the people that, you, that you're talking to. Because what happens is you start to say, well, what do you want to do while you're here? And they'll say, well, I really want to play golf. Or my daughter loves theater or uh, my wife, she's a librarian and she wants to visit you. I hear you have a brand new library. Well, you, when you hear this kind of information, your comfort level um, really increases. And like I said, each of our 15, we felt really comfortable with. We got to know them via email. When we started, it was in 2000 and the internet wasn't what it was today. And you had one photo of a house to look at. <laughs> and now there are about 20 photos of the exterior, the interior, the picture of the car, the picture of the, of the family, et cetera. So um, you just, you build up a trust level. And if you don't, then you don't exchange. Now, do you get at cars and, and things like that to go along with it? You get the family dog? What, what, uh, what are the limitations? Whatever, the sky is the limit. Yes, we have <laughs> done what's called a pet exchange. We did it with a family in Seattle, and they had a standard poodle, and we had a standard mutt, and we literally crossed in the air, and then when we landed at SeaTac Airport, they said, okay, our van is in parking space B12, and it, that one was pretty amazing. I mean, just to just go to parking space B12, the keys were under the mat, and you, we drove to their home, and there was their standard poodle waiting for us. And then they met our dog when they arrived in San Diego. All right, we're talking about house swapping. Uh, so let's start from the very basics, as, as folks listen to this interview, and they might want to give it a shot uh, to save themselves some money and go to, say, San Diego, where you are. How do yes. we even start the process to swap houses? You join a home exchange company. There are about 70 around the world, and the largest is homeexchange.com. They have about 46,000 homes to exchange, and they're located in about 145 countries. So another one is homelink.org, and we've been a member of Homelink since 1999. They have uh, 14,000 members in about 82 countries. And a smaller one is Sabbatical Homes. They have 600 members in 26 countries. But if you're a professor, a teacher, an artist who likes to go away for long periods of time, uh, you might find other people uh, on Sabbatical Homes that uh, would would be able to do a month to six months to a year exchange. Okay, so a couple of do's and don'ts real quick as I start this process. Do start early. Um, we're communicating now with a family in Minnesota uh, for an exchange next summer. So some people start a year in advance. I usually start about six months. And it's just like fishing. You got to put out your uh, some good bait. And um, you create a, a web page when you join the home exchange company. You create your web page. Your photos are what are most important because if you've got dead plants, if you've got um, blinds that are look dirty or dusty, or um, you want to open up your blinds, let the sun shine in, take some some photos. You don't need a professional, but just take some photos that make your house look good. Uh, put it in its best light, and um, that they're just I can't stress that enough how important the photos are. Put them up on your, your personal website, which is once you join the home exchange company, it's very easy to walk through. I am not techie and I can do it. <laughs> um, and then you just start, like I said, you start sending out requests. And I usually send to maybe 15 people uh, if I like the look of their home and I'll just create a little email and I cut and paste it, cut and paste, cut and paste. And I write to about 15 people about, like I said, six months before I'm, I want to do the exchange. All right. That's good. I'll, I'll give that a shot. Sounds like a great idea. It's working for you, isn't it? Thank you, Shelly. It, it is. Thank you so much for having me. You got to have a great Sunday. You can find out more information about house swapping by reading Michael DeGroote's article on DesertNews.com. We've also included links to Shelly's social media sites that she named there, and you just might find a cool place 
swapping your house. When we come back, we'll get the pulse on the week ahead. And the truth behind that Black Friday, is it really the best day to find a deal? This is the Deseret News Sunday edition on KSL.